Yeah, don't let this fancy tool intimidate you either. I just use it because I have it, and this one doesn't work. Otherwise, I would have used it. Um, as far as DVOMs go, digital volt ohmmeters, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of money on them. I think the cheaper the better. If you can get a cheap one, get it, because you're going to wreck the thing sooner or later anyways. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. You start wearing out cables. and Like this one here, the ammeter side doesn't even work. I hook it up to amps. And um, I was working at a shop once. I think one of the service writers decided to dig through my toolbox and use it. It blew the fuse and it blew the ammeter side of the thing. So the rest of it works fine though. You can also use one of these. It's a fuse buddy. Um, I don't know, I paid like 35 bucks for this. It's nice because you can just plug it into a circuit where the fuse is. And um, you'll blow fuses if, if it's something really bad, but you won't hurt the tester at all. The only thing I don't like about these is the battery. It's not a regular AAA, it's some fancy camera battery that costs a bunch of money. So. I don't use it very often. I got a couple of these ones for a wider fuse. But yeah, yeah, you know, like I say, I just use that but because I got it and you don't need it. And you can get these at Sears or Harbor Freight or even Walmart. They probably got them for about $15. They're really not that expensive. You don't need to spend $100 on a fluke or however much money for one of them fancy ones. It does the same job. I don't even understand why people buy those things. So... There it is. That's it. Today I'm going to show you how to find a parasitic draw 2002 Echo. Um, she had it sitting for a couple of days and the battery went dead and it wouldn't start. So I hooked up an ammeter. That's what I got. 0.062. It bounces up a little more from that too. That's right on the border right there. It should be okay for a lot of fancy cars. But uh, what you do is you just hook it up to an amp scale. See, 10 amp, common ground. And disconnect the battery terminal and go from negative to negative. When you wire it up for amps, don't ever go positive to negative. Because if you do, you're gonna blow a fuse in your, in your voltmeter and you might burn it out. So yeah, that's a big no-no on the amp scale. But yeah, what I did was, first thing I did was just disconnect it and connect it. And I can hear something clicking. Got a relay coming on and off. So I took a stethoscope, Harbor Freight, three, four dollars stethoscope. Nice cheap stuff. And I put it on all of these while I was doing that, and I tried to figure out which relay is making the noise. Come down to the horn relay, pop that relay. I could have popped the fuse too to do the same thing. 0.009 amps. It should sit for a month without going dead. Um, this thing's been in a front end collision. Somebody repaired it. They didn't wire something upright or something. I told her I pulled the horn circuit and everything worked. And it's fine like that. There's just no horn. Well, apparently the horn didn't work anyways, so she says just leave it. So there it is. That's my amazing fix. And that's how you find a parasitic draw. You just want to just start pulling fuses one by one and, until you see that until you see that amperage drop. And then when it does, you know you've isolated your circuit and that gets you started after you isolate your circuit, then you can go from there and see what's going on in the car. I didn't have to fix this wiring problem. It might have a short to ground somewhere or something. There might be a problem with the horn. I, I don't know. So, But yeah, that's how you find it anyways. How to fix one? Could be anything. So, 
Good luck. I'm done.